It's Ben, Team Victory Star. I've never actually been on one of these videos before that I'm aware of, except as, as a playing player. a game. I've never you done haven't a, hosted one a, of these. Right. I've never hosted a deck profile. deck profile. So as you can see, I'm a little bit uh, bad at this. Um, <laughs> He'll get better. But For once, he's yeah. bad at the game. We convinced him to <laughs> do this. Game, you idiot. Game, we convinced him to do this, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Man. But yeah, I'm finally doing this. And I'm doing a deck profile on a deck that I actually really enjoy playing. It's not, I'm not going to say it's a good deck because it's not, but it is It's fun. the most annoying deck. It is very annoying and it is very much fun. And if it works, it really works. But shout out it to It either ben, goes though, zero or to a hundred. Pretty much. No, nowhere in between. Yeah, <laughs> because, pretty much. But shout out to Ben though, because he did top with a list that was pretty damn similar to what he's profiling. Yeah, we'll get to guys. that in a minute. Um, but anyway... If you're wondering, you probably are by now, it's Night March. It's in the description. Or it's on the title. Yeah. Four Joltik, four Pump Kaboo, four Lampet. Because if you he's run, not retarded. If you run if you anything, anything but this, if you run anything but this as far as your Night March is concerned, you're either bad this game or you're going to get a game not loss running because you're running March, five you're just <laughs> <laughs> you just just stop running Night March if you don't run a four 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 line of these. Please, but I don't have do four of the This is the Joltik. only way to do it. Play and if you don't have four Joltik, just go buy a pack of Phantom Forces. Area. You'll get one. You'll get both of these in at least one pack. You will likely get Lampant, yeah. because that's everywhere. That's probably the most common one, and it's an uncommon. Which is ironic, because these are common, so these are uncommon. So but yeah, so, if you don't already know, the basis of this deck is to get Night Marchers in the discard pile and have at least one of them in play so as to attack with Night March, which does, as you can read on these, 20 damage times the number of Pokémon in the discard pile with Night March as, as an attack for them. And now this does tend to get a little bit dangerous because when getting rid of those, you have to keep in mind, you have to keep at least one of them in play to use the attack. And that can but sometimes none of these. get a little bit difficult. None of these. And, yeah. You with Lampet, the, the thing with Lampet is that it's the first thing to go. It is always the first thing to go. Because we don't Because run there's Litwick. no Litwick. You don't run Litwick in this deck. I tried it once, I don't recommend it. It just doesn't help that much. It's not good enough to warrant any spots, really. Um, and it, it, also require, it would also require a basic Psychic, which you don't necessarily want. Uh, so there's that. Uh, three... Sorry, three sets of four Night Marchers, that is absolutely vital to this deck. If you're not running that, you're doing it wrong. Completely, 100%, you are going in a U-turn the opposite direction. You are trying to drive to uh, uh, Hawaii, <laughs> which is not possible. Pretty much. You are trying to drive You're going to have a bad a time. You are trying to drive straight yeah. in a U-turn only. <laughs> so, okay, now this variant, the variant I run does tend to focus a little bit on... Mew EX. Now, in most decks, this is a terrible, terrible card. Because it's a two-prize, 120 HP attacker. And in most cases, that is really, really bad. Because Why do you run I two? actually played a game earlier today, because... I actually played a game earlier today, and I won because my opponent played a Mew EX in a Pyroar deck. Which, I'm sorry, don't ever do that. Do yourself a favor, don't ever do that. <laughs> the reason I like Mew is because it does provide you with an additional attacker without having to put your Night Marcher in play in harm's way. Uh, it does also benefit from Dimension Valley, which I'll get to later. Why do you so only play that. two Mew? The reason I only play two Mew, that's a good question actually, is because I, I actually used to run three. The reason I went down to two is because, well, as I said before, it's a two prize EX, it's a two prize 120 HP attacker. It's just honestly not worth the effort. And if you run into a really bad player who's still running Lugia at this point, you're in deep shit. And you'd hate to go against it if you have a safeguarder staring you in the face. That too, that's really, really bad. Because like, oh no, I got will four Mews and one Joltik. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> and honestly, the deck. And the reason I only run two, the reason I went down from three, besides the prize problem, is that you really don't need it. It's not vital to the deck like the Night Marchers are, because obviously that's the engine of the deck. Um, it's helpful. I like it a lot, just not enough to run three. Sometimes you can even run your opponent a six prize game. Yeah, that just by not seven. The Night Marchers. In fact, yeah, that's because I mean that's a lot of times. Oh, that's, that's what the I do against Don Fan. <laughs> 
That's the easiest. It seven is. Prizes. It is. It will be the easiest seven prizes you'll ever take. But it's still a seven prize game. But you still exactly. You're still making your opponent take seven prizes. Theoretically. Now, one of the concerns with this deck, especially with the rise of Landorus bats or bats in general, really, is the fact that you are taking damage on the bench. Now, while I know it's not that helpful in that situation, it can be a lifesaver to run one Mr. Mime. Bench Barrier is a lifesaver. Now, real quick, um, I did face a Night March deck in St. Louis Regionals. Mr. Mime does have a limited help. It is very limited because if they get a Crobat onto a Joltik, it's dead. Yeah, and pretty it, much. Just if, if they're running Landers or just Bats in general, Joltiks are dying fast. I'd say Mr. Mime helps about 75% of the time. 25%, something's going to pick him off or Lysander him or whatever. Yeah. And there is the obvious well, ever-present danger. You can Mime in the active, which is actually a good You can, and it's annoying. There yeah. is that. You can use Cybolt if need be, because this deck does run basic psychic energy. Which is kind of funny to think about, honestly. <laughs> I've actually done that. Uh, Ram for the game. <laughs> I've done Cybolt for 80, actually, with a muscle band and uh, weakness. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Long story short, Mr. Mime is great. Even if you start with it, if you're, say, not against a sniping deck, or even if you are, it can be a great stall tactic at the start of the game. The problem with that is, I will admit, you do want to get rolling fast with this deck. Stalling is bad, <laughs> it is because it's not mix. going to work for very long. Because again, it's a zero or a hundred. Because, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's not forget that the highest, <laughs> the highest HP count in this deck is 120, and that's on an EX. Besides that, it's 70. That's Mr. Mime. It's pretty easy to hit. It is. I easy mean, lamp it if you count that, but you don't a ever Mewtwo. play it. A Mewtwo with a double colorless energy, or even a Dimension Valley, one energy and a Muscle Band will one shot this. It's not going to last very long. It's funny. To but think about too. despite all that, and yes, I know those are a lot of downsides. Mr. Mime is a great card in this deck. Mr. It's Mime comes absolutely through. vital. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that Mr. Mime did set me back about five turns of knocking out three Joltics. It does it tend is to do really that. annoying because I had to get out the Crobat, which takes three turns. Really annoying. <laughs> It, it really is. So it can stall for a while and save you the game a little. So yeah, so that's our Pokemon line. We got four Joltik, four Pump Kaboo, four Lampant, two Mew EX, and then one Mr. Mime. So 15 that's all Pokemon, Pokemon in total. That's, it's really all you need for this variant. 12 and don't run Sigilyph like other bad players. Yeah, don't do not do that. Please, dear God. Do yourself a favor, don't do that. Just try to get it as fast as possible. That's all oh, you need to do. Oh, but I play it, so I start with it, so I can prepare for my oh, Night Marchers on the bench. No, you don't. That was actually an excuse I heard, and I was like, no, stop. No, you don't. <laughs> uh, okay, on to supporters now. Pretty standard for Professor Sycamore, or Juniper if you prefer Juniper. It, How dare you? Personal I prefer Juniper. Out of the three of us, we, uh, the two of us play Juniper, and you play Sycamore. I use what I've got at my disposal. I happen to have four Sycamores handy I have at the time. four Sycamore in my other two decks. This is uh, a final clash. This, this is pretty much a no-brainer for this deck. You, I mean, it discards Night Marchers. It gets them in the discard pile relatively early. Get, running four, you get refreshing hands pretty quickly. Um, and there's really no downside to this card in this deck. Most of the nope. stuff in the deck, you can actually afford to do without. You don't, you're not often going to be discarding a lot of stuff you need with Sycamore, and that's why it's so good in this deck. It's great in every deck, but it's especially good in this. So, four Sycamore, standard. I know pretty standard for almost every deck, but especially good in this one. Now, I get a lot of heat for this. I only run three N. It's arguable, but four is better. Uh, some would say four is better, but honestly, in this deck, if you're rolling pretty quickly, you do not want to be drawing into ends. Did you it's almost like bad. Speed Lugia, Did because it speed? is a little bit like that. Because if you're not rolling fast, you're in trouble anyway, and end is not going to be that much better than, say, oh, I don't know, Chorus. Did you play three N when you played top eight? I did. Okay. I did run three N when I place top eight in Swiss at the Avon City Championship. And as for the Avon City Championship, once I made top cut, it did not go well. <laughs> um, don't take laser bank. I, <laughs> I basically got double donked in the first round of that just because first off, laser bank against Joltik is not a fun thing. Second, my opponent was running Seismitoad. That is that is, are that is not fun. I will say this, I did play a Seismitoad deck in the first round of that tournament. And I actually somehow managed to get eight Night Marchers in the discard pile, turn one, which is your only hope against Seismitoad. You have to be knocking them out early. Yes. Um, I just got insanely lucky that game. 
Seismitoad, you should consider it pretty much an auto loss for this deck. Partly because you don't have a whole lot of HP to work with, and partly because item lock is bad. I saw this person playing next to me. They uh, dropped a Pumpkaboo active. Their opponent had a Seismitoad with a DC muscle band. Played Verbank, the Juniper. The guy was really nervous. He whiffed the laser, and the guy got a um, Night March out turn one for uh, 200. Got him. It hurts. It, he, yeah. Like, like we've said, we've said it before, we'll say it again. Mm -hmm. This deck, if it sets up, it kills. Mm -hmm. I consistently hit, usually for at least 100 damage on the first turn with this deck. Really nice. I say at least 120. At least. Yeah. And then most Pokemon that are really, really big are either weak to it or resistant to it, but mostly weak to it. Yeah, because pretty much. Mostly weak to it. Okay, so next supporter, this is also pretty standard. Two Lysander. Everyone loves Lysander. It's a great <laughs> card. It's It should be run at least one in every deck. Um, I run two just because it's clutch. Um, two come through! It's clutch. It gives you that... Hey, Ben said clutch. I say that. I do say that, okay. believe it or not. Um, it can bring up, say, oh, I don't know, something that's actually weak to a pump kaboo or something like that, early game, like Mewtwo. Let's say your opponent was stupid enough to bench a Mewtwo and you had a pump kaboo with five Night Marches in the discard pile. GG. They messed up. <laughs> you done goofed. Um, so they have one of the Lysander. best supporters in the game. Again, one of the best supporters in the game. It, it should be run in every deck, at least game. one of. And Funny just, thing. I like how Catcher was a $15 card when it released, but now uh, Lysander's a supporter, it's only like a dollar. Yeah, it's a funny story about that, actually, is because uh, when Boundaries Cross first released, I went to a pre-release, I pulled a full art uh, Landorus EX, which, as you may know, is now a $40, $40 card. to $50 card, depending on who you ask. Um, at the time, it was up there as well. But also at the time, Pokemon Catcher was a $15 card. <laughs> and I didn't have any at the time. I was still getting into the swing of getting good at this game. So what I did was, and at the time, in my defense, this was a really good deal. I traded my Full Art Landorus EX for four Pokemon Catcher. Because I deal. desperately needed them. And that it was, was a good deal at the time, it was now a good it's a deal. huge ripoff. Yeah, if you don't, like please, worth do yourself a favor, don't ever do that now. <laughs> because it's just terrible. Okay, back on topic. We got the two Lysander. So someone trade a Mewtwo promo for four Muscle Band. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Because it's worth it. I'm it's like, about it's level now, annoying. actually. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I recently did this. I do like this. Just, it works as a one of. I run one Skyla. It's good for getting that battle compressor, or that switch, or that muscle band, whatever you may need at the time. Even the computer search, or whatever your whatever you choose to run as your A spec. I run computer search, but we'll get to that later. Skyla, when it came out in Boundaries Crossed, I, I sat down, looked at it, and said, this is going to be run in pretty much every single deck. And it should be. It's so a great card. Karina so wasn't... Let's, okay, backtracking. <laughs> uh, Karina was not a thing back then. And nobody saw that coming. And that was like eight sets later or something. True. But yeah, so Skyla, I have always loved Skyla. She's one of my favorite gym leaders in the video games. She's one of my favorite cards in the trading card game. So, I, yeah, I only run the one, but you really don't need more than that. And we'll get to why in a minute. And I'm going to catch some heat for this next card, just because most people think it's silly. I run one Shauna. Why? Just because late game, as I was talking about earlier, late game N sucks. It's re Yeah, you might be hurting your opponent with a new hand, but let's be honest, if you're playing N late game... It better be because you need something, and if you're doing that, you probably want Shauna instead. It's a shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw five cards. It's a solid supporter. It's um, going to be the replacement for N. Uh, see, I'm not sure about that, but we'll get to that later. So yeah, one Shauna, and for that, a different time. that will round out the supporter line. Now, on to item cards, the biggest part of this deck, as well it should be. First off... If you don't run this, you're making a huge mistake. Four Battle Compressor. It's very important that you run these, because if you don't run four, your odds, even dropping just down to three, your odds of getting one in your starting hand go down significantly, and that is not something you want. You have to get at least one of these off 
in the first turn. Uh, that's how you get your Night Marchers in the discard pile. It's very effective, and you, you need four. Otherwise, you're bad at this game. Pretty much. Next, I run three bicycle, just because <laughs> I do tend to have small hand sizes. <laughs> Uh, shut you. up. No, one of my killing. favorite cards in the game, to be honest. It, it's a great card. It's actually one of my top uh, Draw cards lives. until you have four cards in your hand. Yeah, there are times when you can't play it, but it has been huge for me in this deck. It's I good because it. if you have no hand, but you have a Skyla, you can Skyla for a bike, then bike for four. Exactly. Yet another use for the ever-versatile Skyla. Explosive draw. Out of yeah, nowhere. It really is. Does it and kill when, you that you have two reverse bike and one regular? A little bit. It does <laughs> And when someone drops bit. a bike and you're going against them, you're kind of crying a little, because you're like, okay, they can bike for whatever they need. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, next. Very very important, at least three Ultra Ball. I run three just because I found I didn't really need four. Um, and you probably four. won't either. But if you want to run four, that's fine. I personally prefer three. You can discard a Night Marcher to get another Night Marcher and then Sycamore it away or something like that. Or you can he get He does that very Mr. often. Mind. It's really annoying. It's great. I love it. It really helps the way the deck runs. It also irritates me that I have two Dark Explorers and one Plasma Blast Ultra Ball. In. I got two uh, Plasma Blast. Shut up. I'll help you out. <laughs> um, next, something very, very helpful. On the off chance you are, say, 10 or 20 short on your Night Marches and Discard Pile, Muscle Band. Very, very important. I run three. You could run four. It really doesn't matter, but you have to at least run three just because of the way this deck runs. Megas and Primals are becoming a thing. That helps you hit that magical 240. If it you need does. It. It, it's unlikely, but it is possible. It does happen. I've done it before. And that's what we run four now. <laughs> you might. I might consider doing that. I'm going to test this a little bit later, see how it works, just see what it does against the new decks. All right. Um, as we've said in another video, we do tend to prefer running three rather than two versus Seeker. This deck is no exception. Three versus Seeker, I have run it in most of my decks recently. It is a lifesaver. Just the... The ability Tremendous. to get a supporter out of the discard pile is absolutely incredible. And it lessens the need for Dowsing Machine. It does, which is one of my favorite cards. I do love Dowsing Machine, but Versus Seeker in this deck makes it unnecessary. Is it better? It's it's just good. I do what your main hope can do. There's no deck that should not <laughs> run Versus Seeker. How did I just walk into? <laughs> Talk about Versus Seeker, how I can get a supporter out. Next, yeah, something, that's, something that's pretty helpful I've found is 2-switch. You don't need 2-switch. I like 2-switch. Sucks just discard because, energy. Yeah. It's a pretty low energy deck compared to, say, Breezy and Genesect because or something like that. <laughs> just, because, just because you don't need it. And we'll get to why in a minute, but 2-switch, I think, is just about right in this deck. That's the way and I run it. And one is just a little too less, because you it might is. need it at you're, the right you're time. You're going to need probably at least two. If you right. play it. Now on to my one of item cards. I run a town map. I'm going to catch hell for this, but I don't care. No, you're not. A lot of people run town map. I love town map yeah. in this deck, because if you, like me, frequently prize your night marchers, you Ooh. need town map. You need to know where they are. You need to be able to get them as soon as possible. Because that is a very important thing in the format these, these days. In, in, in almost every other deck, it's awful. But in this deck, you pretty much have to run it. And you have a lot of space. So why not? You do have a fair bit of space compared to most decks. It's just the way it works. It's actually in one of my top ten. I rarely play it, but it's still a top yeah, ten. It's item. up there. It's a good card. It's really and when Alpha Lithograph was printed, everyone was like, what? You can look at your prize cards. And they're like, yeah. okay, it's on map. Uncommon. They're like, yeah. oh. Um, next is Tool Retriever. I only run the one just because, I mean, it's helpful if, say, my Mew gets Head Ringered or something like that, or Jamming Net, which is just as destructive, if not more so, in fact. Um, it's there for that. It's there for, let's say I know I'm going to lose something next turn that happens to have a muscle band attached to it. Get that muscle band back, put it on something else. It's, it's just, it's good. I like it. And I Fun do not regret mess around with. You have the space, for a so why not? Um, I used to run two of these, but I went down to one recently. Startling Megaphone. I think every deck, pretty much, should run at least one of these. Even if you don't have abilities. Right. And I, Because Garbodor isn't as much of a threat as it used to be. Um, but it's, now, it's more play it's, now. It, it, I do think it's going to see a little bit more play just because of Crobat. But beyond that... You, I mean, your bats, your bats are going to kill the Trubbish before anything can happen. That's true. Um, but even so, even without Garbodor being a huge presence in the format, Startling Megaphone, just play it at the right time, you can completely screw your opponent. 
and that is something that this deck loves doing. Hard Charms on Salty Donut is probably the most annoying thing ever. It really is. Getting rid that's, of that. That's hard against this match. Especially if they're running Saddle Circle and you're hitting them with a Jolt that's for bad. weakness. That's you have no really weakness. Bad. So, and they're reducing by 20. So, yeah. get that off there. So, hit for as much Starling as you Megaphone, I love it. It should be running pretty much every deck. Um, and now on to the ace spec. As I said before, computer search. It's great. Um, you need consistency in this deck. Dowsing Machine, you really don't need it. Um, and this, the great thing about computer search in this deck is that you need those double colorless energy. We'll get to that in a minute, but double colorless is vital for this deck. And, and this is the mind, only card in the format, aside from um, upcoming town map. This is Keep in mind, this is back from before Primal Clash came out. But, and keep in mind, this is coming from three different or three different players who all like Dowsy Machine more than Computer Search. So when a deck really needs Computer Search, I think the only other deck that needs it more than this would be Toad, because Computer Search would be easy. Yeah, it's, just, it's just, just, just the like, way it works. You, just like sometimes Toad. you just need it. When you rely on your special energy, Computer Search is your go-to card. Almost, almost exclusive. Exclusively, yes. Yes. So, like I said, I prefer Dowsing Machine generally, but not in this deck. You do need computer search. All right, I do have three more trainers in here, and this is a very important card, Dimension Valley. You can probably figure out on your own, but I'm going to tell you anyway why this is a vital card in this deck. It reduces the attack cost of both Pumpkaboo and Mew by one colorless. And with, and with the way... Um, Mew and Pumpkaboo work. Let's say you've got a Joltik on the bench and a Mew active. With Dimension Valley in play, you can attack with Night March for one energy. Not even a double colorless, just a basic psychic or a basic lightning or whatever. It, Why do you run three and not four? I run three because just because people find it's, four standard. Yeah. Some do. I like three. I don't find myself really needing it desperately a lot. Just because it, it just doesn't. Plus, I don't. Plus, Joltik's a thing. So you Joltik can, is a you thing. Can still attack with it. Um, you can you can attack without Dimension Val. It's preferable that you have it in play, though. But so you don't feel it's an absolute work. necessity. Yes. It's not an but, but absolute it, necessity, but it helps but if a lot. But you better run this in this deck. If you if you don't if you run Dimension Valley in Night March, you are making a huge mistake. If you have the space, play four. Otherwise, three is just as fine. Yeah. If you don't. I like three, but that's just me. It just depends on how you run your deck. Um, finally, on to energies. This is going to look a little wonky, but there is rhyme and reason to it. Um, I run three basic psychic, two basic lightning, and then, and this is vital, if you don't run this, again, you're making a huge mistake, four double colorless energy. Nine energy cards in the deck, it really doesn't need any more than this. Um, yeah, I've found myself lacking one energy every now and again, but I feel like that's the case with every deck. It's just gonna happen. Why do you not play straight psychic or mixed variety Why do you play energy? lightning? The reason I play lightning, that's a very good question. Um, I've actually had knockouts with Joltik with Gnaw. <laughs> it's, that, that's very rare, I will say that. But it's also, it's also very helpful against uh, Manectric, which is a hard matchup for this deck, just because Megas. Um, let's say you don't have a Night Marcher in play, you can snipe. Or you can use Muta Turbo Bolt. Yeah, you can't do that as well. You can't do marcher. that as well. It's you hilarious. Usually you probably won't be doing that. And you can do it for one lightning. If you do, you can do it for one lightning energy if you've got Dimension Valley in play. And it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's my energy line. It really, it does, this isn't vital, but you can tweak this depending on your list, depending you on your You can run one of each preference. different energy, and yeah, that's how people do. run it. You could do. I've yeah, gotten, I've it. gotten knockouts with Joltik, with Gnaw. I've gotten a knockout, I actually got a knockout once against Austin with, um, Pump Kaboo's Ram attack for one Psychic. Uh, but we'll yeah, get into that did. some other time. It was pretty hilarious at the time. But if you were to play five mixed energy, I would say play a fairy, because fairy garden stuff is common now, or becoming more common. Sometimes. I would play one fighting, because you can copy spinning turns as well as Hammerhead. Or Hammerhead. Hammerhead. Hammerhead would be hilarious. If Hammerhead is to. funny. I'll and say that. And last but not least, one grass, because you could also for stat stations. Um, but yeah, so this is my energy line. You may run something different. I like the consistency of this, just the way it works. Tell us what you run and see, and tell us how it works for you. We that is actually always fun to hear is how people's decks that 
are similar to ours run just to see if we're doing something completely wrong. Like, if I'm doing something completely wrong, I want to know about it. Or maybe you guys are doing something a lot better. Yeah, like you guys I want to hear it. Like maybe you're we better didn't. players than us. We don't know. Yeah. Maybe Jason probably Kuzinski are in the case of Vegan. So we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, that's my Night March deck. It did. It worked wonders for me in Swiss and Avon cities. It's like I said, it's a it hit or miss deck. It still works wonders for you now. It does work wonders <laughs> for me now. It's a really fun deck. I love running it. Yeah, it stalls a lot, but it's I true. I truly enjoy running this deck. So. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, again, I'm Ben, Team Victory Star. Um, if you like the video, please hit like, hit subscribe, and share it. Share it if you want. We'll see you next time. Thanks.